Well, praise the Lord, everyone. So good to see all of your faces. Welcome to Fuel for Courage, which is our interactive evening Bible study. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm Reverend Daryl Winston, accompanied by my lovely wife, Sister Joe Winston. And we are just so glad to see you all. And um, this is our fourth week. And we have been covering uh, the five senses for Christ. And uh, particularly this week, we will be dealing with taste and hearing. And so just want to kind of whet your appetite and let you know what will be uh, uh, what awaits you. But before we go any further, if you'll just bow your heads for a brief word of prayer. Father God, we come before you right now, humble and contrite, praying, Lord, that you will pour into us this evening, Lord. Illuminate yourself, illuminate your word that we might know more about you, Lord, and that we ourselves might be better Christians, better servants, uh, better to serve the kingdom, Lord. We need you. We love you, Lord. We pray that we can help somebody, Lord, by the things that we're learning, that we're not keeping all of this knowledge to ourselves, but that we might be equipped to help somebody, empowered to help somebody, Lord. Bless this evening Bible study as we learn more about you, as we lift you up. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So with that, um, I'm going to ask uh, Sister Jo if she will be kind enough to turn us to our first slide and share a screen. And we're going to be looking at, uh, as you, those who have their Bibles, we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 25, and Revelation 21, 3. Just to give you a heads up, chapter 26 deals with communion. So that uh, if we're eating, we're tasting, and we're supping with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 25, there's those mad wonderful words we will be hearing, well done, my faithful servant. And then chapter uh, Revelation 21, 3, we'll be dealing with hearing that great voice. So now that's the uh, prelude. Let's actually see what the scripture says. Can somebody turn to Matthew chapter 26 and read verses 26 through 29? However, the Holy Spirit leads you. Matthew chapter 26, just three verses, 26 through 29. I'll read it, brother. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it unto them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. And so, again, we're just being reminded of the significance and the power of using one of our five senses, taste. Uh, something is so important that God has, Jesus has commanded us to do. Let us take a look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. Anybody? Verse 21, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into, thy, into the joy of thy Lord. So as disciples, and in many respects uh, in our church or wherever we're at, we're leaders. We're doing what God has called us to do and that he's empowering us and to, to be able to hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful <laughs> servant. I can't wait to hear those words. And lastly, if we could have someone read Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. I'll read, I'll read it. it. Oh, oh, that we, we got a lot of reading, so we're going to be able to spread it around. But I love go it. Ahead, Deborah. Go ahead. Okay. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. 
And see, the power of the Holy Spirit just gave you that extra verse just to kind of tie it all together because not only are we hearing his great voice, but in hearing that, what it means, no more crying, no more pain, no more suffering, no more death. Oh, when we hear that voice, as you can see, I've been preparing for this lesson. I've been shouting all week. So uh, you're going to jump on this train with me, but praise the Lord. So let us come on back together. And uh, so now that we can see each other. So before we proceed, I want us to do our own recap together. There's these five senses that we've been talking about, and I'm going to do a brief recap, but I thought collectively it would be wonderful for us to do a recap. So let's say something uh, resonated with you last week or two weeks ago or three weeks ago, whatever it is. Uh, and it's important that we do this because we're recording these Fuel for Courage episodes. And somebody might hear, I, I was wondering where that was at. And so that you, you tickled my ear in a way, you pricked my heart that I'm going to go back and catch all of these, all because we had an opportunity to recap one or two things that stuck with you. So whether it be last week when just touching the hem of Jesus' garment and that was the one that did it for you or whatever, but if you just have the Holy Spirit leads you, something that, that, was, that stuck out and resonated with you. Is there anybody? Oh, but for me, I think that when we talked about the... Um... The, the woman with the issue of blood um, and her unclean condition and how she was viewed in society. Um, I thought bringing out how she might have smelled in that, you know, in that crowd um, was very powerful because that's something that um, we often don't think about. Um, so I thought that was a powerful thing to, to bring light to. Amen. Wonderful. And the other thing with the women, the, um, the woman with the issue of blood is her perseverance. I pulled out of that regardless of all, you know, the obstacles that she faced and people being around her, she had to like push her way through just to touch the hem. And then someone mentioned she wasn't trying to hug him and, or just grab his entire clothes. She's needed a small touch. And I think it's almost like that mustard seed of faith. You just need that little. You need a big old onion. You see, they something very tiny um, to have just faith in the Lord, and that's what resonated with me. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Anything else that just 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 stuck with you? This was that moved you, that caused you to pray, that caused you to weep, that caused you to think. In these past three weeks, here's something that crossed my mind when we were talking about uh, the sense of touch. With regard to baptism, hmm. do you consider sprinkling a child the same as immersion of an adult? Well, that, that's an interesting question. So you, you're raising a new one, but uh, we'll, we'll see how the power of the Holy Spirit meet, uh, leads us. From the Baptist tradition, we teach and believe in full immersion. There are a lot of denominations, and so to be sprinkled, uh, they may call a baptism and call it a form of baptism. Uh, mm -hmm. So for in this particular denomination of Baptists, uh, we believe in full immersion, but some would call sprinkling a form of Baptist, and so it's uh, the word uh, baptizo, water, washing, cleansing, symbolic of cleansing ourselves as we come forth new uh, with Jesus Christ. But a wonderful question. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, whether it be any other questions that we covered previously or something else that you wanted to, that was near and dear that, that, that you wanted to bring forth in the past three weeks? Well, Reverend Winston, when we talked about um, the sense of touch, the touching, and when we said that, um, talked about how it's not always a physical touching, you know, that, you know, a phone call or reach out a hello, or that we can actually touch people in that way. And so, you know, so it, it's, it made me think to, to pray and ask God, because sometimes, you know, there's somebody out there that needs to hear, hear from you or words of encouragement. So I've included in my prayer to, for the Lord, if there's somebody out there that I can, that I can reach out and touch, you know, that I'm not aware of. To, to make me aware of it. Amen. That's wonderful. 
Wonderful. Well, thank you all for sharing. And so we're going to now go to our, our next screen and our next slide. And hopefully the Lord will continue to illuminate and pour into us. So at, just so that we're clear, in case this is the first time somebody's watching this, uh, the senses that we're talking about are sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. Thus far, we've already covered sight, smell, and touch, and the remaining two are taste and hearing. Our next slide. One of the things in, as we were dealing with the five senses is and discipleship, and we use some key words and I've gone over this before, but I want to just kind of keep uh, hitting the drum on Jesus is the master and we are the students and we are here to learn. We're here to serve him and there should be a willingness to leave these worldly things behind and not get caught up on so many trophies, but that we're here to serve the Lord and his kingdom. And there should be a willingness to follow Christ, not just in church, but anywhere. We covered some additional characteristics as we were trying to define what is a disciple and some of the qualities or characteristics. And one key one is don't be like unbelievers. You would think that we wouldn't have to say that, but so much of the church is mimicking what's going on in the world. We need to have the world trying to be like us, being more righteous and more godlike and more friendly to our neighbors. But too often we're seeing just the opposite. And that just shows you how soft and subtle Satan can be in getting the church to be more like the world instead of the other way around. And we highlighted previously the importance that too often uh, when we say those who pen the Bible, we talk about men, 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 men. But in fact, the Bible is replete with women working and serving in the key to kingdom. And in particular, the passage that we were looking at in verse 18 there, sons and daughters. There is a role for women to be leaders and preachers and teachers and serving in God's kingdom. So we're going to do something new here, and so prayerfully you'll bear with us. As you can see where it says discipleship, and <clears throat> we're going to take a look at Revelations chapter one. And I just need three readers. And so we've, I've been hearing a lot of energy. So if I can, if you can identify yourself as reading uh, within these now six verses each uh, or so, um, one through 19, but I just need three readers. And so, okay, who's the first person? Judith. Okay, so Judith will be, Judith is reader one. Who's going to be reader two? Cassandra. All right, Cassandra is two. And who's going to be reader three? I will. Okay. Who said that? Angela. Okay. Sister Bullock. Okay. Now, let me tell you what you signed up for. I should have given you this beforehand, but my wife said you should tell them before you tell before they volunteer. Um, I believe important that in Bible study that we cover the full body uh, of learning, and and one of the important aspects of church is reading scripture and not just reading scripture just for the sake of reading it. But I would like to challenge us through the power of the Holy Spirit to read with passion. So wherever the Holy Spirit is convicting you on whatever verse or word, read it with passion. Um, while I was in seminary, a good friend of mine was saying that he was taught that read the scripture like your life depended on it because somebody is hearing the word from God and hearing from you as you're reading. And the, the word of life is contained in, in those words. And so I encourage you as we read uh, these 19 verses, as the Holy Spirit convicts you. So we're going to grab our Bibles. We're going to go to Revelations chapter one, and we're going to go one through 19. And we're going to space that out accordingly. And Sister Judy's going to start us off. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bore record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy 
and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and had made us kings and priests unto God and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Awesome, awesome, wonderful, wonderful. Our second reader. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Yes. And every I will see him, mm. even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. John, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a, cloud, a loud voice like a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. Amen. And our last reader. The hair on his head was, was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. Mm. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. Keep going. Yeah, no, that is perfect. So now we're, we're going to, um, Sister Winston is going to give us the first one that I'm gonna expound upon for you because now I like to make sure that we read scripture. And now what I'm gonna highlight for you is that these are discipleship points that when God is speaking us through his word, we originally were trying to define what discipleship is. And now there are some characteristics or things we should be thinking about or glean from when we read scripture that when we look at verse one, we should see and be inspired by Christ. Christ has revealed himself to us. Next point. We, if you go to verse two from reading that, we should be able to see the Lord's magnificent work. That's a blessing to be able to see and recognize what God has been doing in our lives. In verse three, I have a highlight for you. It's a blessing to read and it's a blessing to hear God's word as from a discipleship standpoint. We should know, and verse five gives us this, Jesus, that J is, Jesus is the faithful witness. Jesus, that J, Jesus washed sins, how? By his blood. Next one. I like a little kid, but it, I just love it. Jesus is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end. You saw it in verse eight. Next one. This is powerful. We've been talking about hearing. As disciples, we should be able to hear Jesus' voice. And what did it sound like? 
in some ways it has been described or akin to many waters. So if you've ever been on a cruise ship and to hear that ocean, to hear that water coming to and fro against the ship, the power of Jesus' voice. And as disciples, we need to know how to be reverent to Jesus. They fell down at his feet. And those are pointers that we should think about in our discipleship, in our walk. Amen. So now we're going to go to the next uh, piece here. I know I'm giving a lot, but uh, it, this, this study was so rich. And so on to our next slide, I told you that we we're going to be covering taste and hearing. And so hopefully you still have your sword out, you still have your Bibles out. But there are so many different scriptures that talk about so many different senses in the Bible. I just highlighted just a few for you. This was a homework assignment that I'm sure you all did, but um, I kind of documented your homework for you. So if someone were to turn to John chapter 2, verse 9, I, I think there's something there for us. John chapter 2, verse 9. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants who drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Amen. So what I want to do, John chapter 2, verse 9 is covering the wedding at Cana. And this is where Jesus is turning water to wine. Now, you might be wondering, why am I highlighting this? Taste. There was a taste. And not only that, if you can think about it, of all the five senses, changing water to wine is the first recorded miracle of Jesus. And what's happening here? This wasn't just any old wine. This was a unique wine, highly prepared, special that Jesus made. And how did you know it was different than the others? Like, oh, now we have the good wine. Taste. Taste was being used in recognizing the recording of the first miracle. That was just me. I was blown away. So I said, let me share that with you because I'm like, my, I never thought about that. How taste was factoring in to the first miracle that was recorded by Jesus. I told you that I've been on a spiritual high all week. So you just have to bear with me and ride with me this week. Matthew chapter five, verse 13. Very pivotal in our discipleship walk. Matthew chapter five, verse 13. Do we have a reader? I'll read it. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Mm -hmm. It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and to be trampled underfoot by men. My, 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 my. And I, I love this passage for a couple of things. As a child, we all learned of the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter five. And just as soon as we rattle those first 12, the very next one, verse 13, what are we called to be? The salt of the earth. And my, 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 have you lost your savor? Because we should all still be on fire for the Lord. But it's, that's another personal reflection if you feel like you don't have that, you don't have any flavor. Your salt isn't sweet or what God has called us to be. That's another story. But we are called to be the salt of the earth. There's a taste to be called and to be reckoned with when we say the salt of the earth. Let's go to Hebrews chapter six, verses four and five. Hebrews chapter six, verse four and five. I'll read. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and mm. the powers of the world to come. So this was an interesting one for me because it's like, it, it's a metaphor, but if we tasted heaven, some say that marriage is a slice from heaven. Uh, I recall being with the, uh, uh, Deacon Morgan and, 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 and Deacon S. Burt Morgan that they've always had these marriage classes that, and just their, their walking lives and to be able to say, um, wonderful marriage is a slice from heaven. What does taste from heaven taste like? And to see a reference like that in Hebrews chapter six. And so if you read verse four and five, another way of paraphrasing it is, if you've heard the phrase once saved, always saved, if ever was saved. And so you have that meaning that if you had been so close to Jesus, 
and have the taste or slice of being with Jesus, you ain't going back to that old worldly way because you're not giving up the taste is sliced from heaven. That's how I characterize it. But uh, taste is so important in our discipleship and our walk with the Lord. Next, we're going to go to turn your attention to now the next one, hearing. Again, so many different scriptures talking about God speaking to us and our ability to hear. But I just highlighted these four for you. So if you will briefly bear with me, but let's take a look at Mark chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, if we have a reader. I can read it. Okay. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving, and ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. So this one was a little bit more challenging for us in the sense that Jesus is speaking to his disciples and that when we start looking at who really understands this mystery and that it is such a blessing for us and our discipleship in this time period and this dispensation to be able to hear and to not be confused with the mysteries that are in the Bible, not to be confused with the parables that we see, but it's, it's one that um, I encourage us to reread again on our own because I, I didn't want to throw too much at us, but we are talking about hearing God's word and application to our lives. The next three are much easier. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 27. Do we have a reader? I have it. Okay. My sheep hear my voice and mm. I know them and they follow me. If this is not one of my all-time favorite scriptures, is this one right here. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. When we talked about discipleship, they're followers of Jesus. We're followers of Jesus, and that gives us the ability to say that we're disciples. Now, we're not going around saying that we are the original first 12. We're not calling ourselves the original uh, 12 apostles or the original 12 disciples, but that we are followers of Jesus Christ, that we hear his voice. And as backed up uh, by John 10, 27. John chapter 5, 25. Anyone? I'll read, I'll read it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. So we were connotating it and seeing that word, to hear, to live. That when God is speaking to us, it's much like, in my mind, like the breath of life, to be able to hear our Lord. When we think about the Old Testament, there was a period of time that heaven was closed and there wasn't a word, we couldn't hear from God. And that's almost like a death, to be separated from God. I want to be able to hear from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so glad he is our intercessor. I'm so glad that he's one that uh, we can pray to and that he is there for us. I want to be able to hear from the master. To hear is to live. Romans chapter 10, we're going to look at verse 15 and verse 17. Romans 10, 15, and 17, if we have a reader. This is Bible study. Y'all didn't think y'all were going to use your Bibles today? <laughs> Amen. I'll read it. I'll read it. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? At, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So um, I, if those who were joining in earlier, uh, we were talking, we went to a minister's conference and we were instructed about our role. And as verse 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? Oh, to be called to do God's work and to preach and preach what? Teach what? God's word. And so it's just a blessing as we look at verse 15 and 17 is very important. So then faith come by hearing so that we want to make sure that when sometimes in our prayers, Lord, uh, sometimes you hear me say, Lord, open up our minds, open up our hearts, but open up our ears that we might hear a word from you because faith 
comes by hearing. Amen. Amen. So can't wait till we get to our next slide. You can see the energy uh, bursting forth on my end over here. Oh, we are enjoying our reading this evening. Now, so as you know, there are five senses. See, smell, touch, taste, and hear. And so, as you know, uh, my wife and I, this is our last session for this week, and then our next teacher instructor will be on next week. So I had to, we had to all put it together right here. And so, you know, I love to have games where we're learning and, and learning about God's word is fun. I thoroughly enjoyed last week when we had three different readers talking about the interpretation of if they had to touch the hem of the, um, the woman with the issue of blood and she was reaching out, touching the hem of Jesus' garment. And it was so nice to hear the different role play. So this time we're all going to be on this last section here. We're going to look at Acts chapter 16, all of us. And we're all going to look at verses 16 through 34. Now, I didn't put the little identifier here, but we all know this story. When Paul and Silas was beaten and imprisoned, and then there was this earthquake, and, a, and, they, and they prayed at midnight, they prayed all night, and then the shackles fell down. And then there was a, the jailer recognized that they were about to escape. And Paul speaks out, do thy no harm. And spoke to him and spoke life to that man, saved him from killing himself. So you know the story. You all can even tell it and preach it better than me. But that's the story that we're about to read. And in looking at that story, can we identify all of the five senses that we've covered for these past four weeks. We should be able to see somewhere where there's vision that they're seeing. We should be able to talk about and identify where there's a smell that from a disciple standpoint that we can talk about that smell. Touch, was anybody touched based on the activity that occurs in these scriptures? Taste, is there any examples of taste as we read these uh, 18 or so verses? And here, is there anything that we can hear from the word of God from a discipleship standpoint? That's what we're going to do collectively together. But first, we have to read the scripture so that it comes to our remembrance. So um, I just need three readers, and we're going to read uh, six verses each from 16 through 34. Do we have a volunteer to be reader one? I'll read do... it. Okay, who said that? Tony. Okay, Tony one. Who's going to be reader two? I will. Okay. So, all right, Linda, thank you. And reader three. Is there anybody that hasn't read that oh, would like to read? I'll do it. Okay. Thank you, Sister Bullock. All right. So we got our three readers. And um, why don't we go ahead to, to gallery, Sister Joe, so that we can see each other. And that we're all going to pull out our Bibles here. And, uh, we're going to go to Acts and to have our, um, our reader go forth. Okay, we're ready for reader one. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain maid possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who showed unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Is that six? Okay, that's fine. Our next reader. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans, 
and the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosened. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. All right, and our third reader. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful story? I love that story. All right, so we're all together now. So we just looked at verses 16 through 34. And... Um, so uh, we're, we're, we'll, we'll go in order. So the first one would be, uh, let's see here, seeing. So we'll do it collectively. We're gonna go see, smell, touch, taste, and hear. So I have my notes, but we just read it together. As, as the Lord pricked your heart or gave you a spiritual epiphany, do you see anywhere where there's vision that they're seeing in relation to um, our five senses? The first one we're talking about seeing. Do you see an example where vision was used or seeing something in relation to discipleship? Okay, I'll give you an example so that, you'll, so that we'll see. Oh, okay, Minister Davis. I was just saying, don't give us hints. Give us a chance. Give us a chance. Okay, fair Are enough, we starting fair with enough. verse 16? That's exactly where I was going. <laughs> okay. So they saw this woman. Every yes. day they go out, there's that same woman. And she's looking what, however she's looking. But that look, you as soon as you see her, you know it's trouble. She's going to come screaming after you and saying the same thing every day. As a disciple, they saw a woman in need. And <laughs> as we, as disciples of Christ, do, who do we see in need? So one of the first senses and perception, Lord bless me or equip me that I might see somebody that I might be a blessing to them. And so that first one was this woman who may have been labeled as being possessed, but they see this woman in need. So thank you, um, Minister Marosha. Anything else now that, we, now that we know how to play the game? We're, we're working on seeing right now. We'll get to the other ones. I mean, you may have a favorite one of touch or one of the other ones, but for right now, I think there's a few more out there, but this collectively, our spiritual juices, do we see any other examples of seeing, a sense using seeing? Well, she saw that they were servants of God. All right. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. There's more. I grew up with a grandmother coming from the depression. There's more meat on the bone. We're going to have to get this down. Well, the minister saw that their golden goose was uh, was cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Another way of phrasing that was they saw a the threat of an angry crowd. That's what I wrote in my notes. But yes, uh, Brother Beasley's correct. Uh, we just phrased it differently. But yes, <laughs> it was the threat of an angry crowd in verse 22. Is there anything else that we see in the scripture that's there that, that we can lift up this evening? Okay, we can come back to that one. Maybe that maybe seeing was a little bit more difficult than, than, than I originally thought. We can always come back to that one. Let's go to smell. Does anybody see where 
um, our senses would be titillated by smell that we recognize and we're using our just from a discipleship standpoint we've learned all of this bible reading all the scriptures that we've been reading so now we've read this wonderful passage of paul and silas are there any examples where we see smell I see well, the, the last return. verse when they said they sat down for a meal, of course. So you smell the food? Okay, I did. That. That's a good one. But then I was thinking, you know, did if they were blocked, they the had to be bleeding, and so you might smell the blood. You know. Hey, there we go. Absolutely, Amen. the fact that, and so now we go back to having participated earlier that we had a couple of chaplains talk about when they're going into nursing homes. We've heard others talk about going into prisons. And that sometimes it may not smell the most rosy in these locations, but nevertheless, when there's a calling to serve and to help and need from a discipleship standpoint, we're more than just believers. We're willing and ready to do the work. And so that they could smell maybe perhaps the stench of the prison. Yes, in the jail, yes. I'm sure in the dungeon, it was horrible. Yes. But they didn't walk away from what God had Watch called them to do. They, they right. praised, they had been beaten and yet they sang and they praised. And even mm -hmm. despite the stench and despite the snow, <laughs> matter of fact, now mind you, we gotta go back to antiquity, we're going back 2000 years. What a dungeon looked like that. We don't talk about sanitize and wash your hands and what we have now. We're talking about a prison like that with stocks, mm -hmm. lock their feet, shackles, bleeding, whipped them good. Many stripes is what the scripture says. That's what they smelled like. Yes. They didn't turn from the Lord. They stayed with them. So now you see how the power of reading scripture and it's coming alive as we talked about seeing this damsel in distress, feeling the whips and smelling the stench from their blood. Is there anything else anyone saw that they may have smelled? Or we can, like you said, uh, uh, the dear sister talked about at the end where they're eating Perhaps the food, there was such a wonderful aroma as if the nostrils and going to God where he could smell this wonderful aroma and hear that they're talking about their whole house was saved. And so what did that smell like? To be able to champion and to spread the gospel and to build the kingdom. A lot of alliteration, a lot of metaphors here. Are, are there any others that someone might see that we didn't cover for either seeing or smelling? Let us move on to the next one. I guess you're ready now with touch. There should be a number of this for touch. Is there any examples of touch in this narrative dealing with Paul and Silas? The lashes. Yes. The yes, those stripes that they took. So when we talk about real discipleship, especially in the Bible, we're not talking about American discipleship. You know, oh, you just go to church, it's air conditioned, it's, it's, you know, the carpet and pews. And we're talking about discipleship here where they're ready to do anything for the Lord's Savior. So they're being beaten. And without their clothes. Yeah, without their clothes. My goodness, yes. Yes. So that, that whips, those stripes, there was touching. <laughs> there was touching. In verse 19... Paul and Silas was touched. Well, they were grabbed. That's right. I have that. They, the evil masters caught them. They caught Paul and Silas. They grabbed them, snatched them up. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Any others that anyone sees? Um, when he watched the wounds in 33, could that be a touch? 33. There you go. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 3 says, and he took them hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized all his straight way. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Okay. wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, did we get to 22 where I said they rent off their clothes? That's yeah. right. Yeah, they snatched their clothes off, tore them off. Tore Excellent. Them. Excellent. And 20, 23 said, and after that, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. That's right. So Threw them on the ground. Threw them in there. Ugh. Mm -mm -mm. Sometimes we don't realize just how good we have it and how and we're it able says, to... I'm sorry. 
in 24, Reverend, I'm, I was thinking prison, but it seems like there was an inner prison. So there must have been deep. You have in 24. I see that. They said inner prison. I'm thinking just the jail, but then looking at this, this must, there must have been another section <laughs> that they were isolated from the regular prisoners. Amen. That's a wonderful observation. Wonderful. Is there any others for, so let, we'll recap. So we've been covering seeing. So if anyone has one that we have not uncovered for seeing, if smell and touch, those are still on the table as we put this puzzle together. When Paul turned, he saw the demon in the young lady. Okay. Yes, he saw. Okay. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. And as far as seeing the keeper of the prisoner in 27, awaken out of his sleep and seeing that the prison prison doors were open, that's when he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, except they were still there. Right. So Paul saw a need. Yeah. He saw that this jailer was about to kill himself mm. and he speaks out. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. Let's go on to taste. So we'll add another one. Taste. Are there any examples of taste from a discipleship standpoint from the things that we've been teaching and covering for the past three or four weeks here? We somewhat kind of, the most obvious one is verse 34. So I'm just going to read it. And when he had brought them into the house, he said, meat or food before them and rejoice, believing in God with all his house. I don't think it's too far of a stretch that there had to be some kind of smell with the food, mm -hmm. a wonderful aroma to have a feast, to break bread with one another, that there would be, uh, that we're talking about they ate and rejoiced. So I, I would think that that would be a fair reading of taste breaking mm. bread with someone that you just brought into and mm. introduced them to Christ mm. and saving their life mm. and the provider for their household that leading to the salvation of his entire household. Oh, that might would be a feast. Mm. Amen. Let's go on to hearing. We'll bring it all together. All five are available now. So sing, smell, touch, taste, and now hear. Are there any examples of hearing throughout this narrative? I would say 32, and they spoke unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And we just read hearing comes, faith comes by hearing and That's hearing right. by the word of God. So this, for this scripture is related or, you know, relating to what we just read in Matthew that they spoke unto him. They didn't give him, uh, just watch me. This happened to me. They spoke the, the word into his spirit that he might know um, why they were, I guess, why they were singing, why they didn't flee or whatever. But they gave him the word, the yes. true word. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> I was thinking more of verse 26. Um, yes. yes. I was wondering if anybody was going to get that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. earth the earthquake. They heard an earthquake. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mine was the chains, hearing the chains becoming unloose. Yes. Yes. And also when the, they were singing. And they, All right. The Thank you. Really Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. In verse eighteen, in verse eighteen, um, Paul commanded the spirit to come out. Yes, excellent, excellent. In twenty-eight, Paul cried with a loud voice. Mm -hmm. Do thy no harm. The jailer to do himself no harm. That's right. Amen. I'm sure he heard that. That's right. That's right. Verse thirty-four. Um. Mm -hmm. The jailer rejoiced. Rejoicing is noise, usually. All right now. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, indeed. Huh? Yes, I love it. I love 29. it. He called for a light so he could mm -hmm. see. 
Okay. Yes. In verse 30, where he asks, what must he do to be saved? Y'all going to shout me out my chair. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, are there any others of the five? Seeing, smelling, touching, tasting, hearing. Any others that you see? Pastor, did we for touch? The jailer took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. Yeah. And did that he was back. Did we did that? We did that mm -hmm. one. Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that, that one's worth two times. That, okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear that for the touch. I'm sorry. I just hear it. Amen. Well, anyway, so first of all, let me thank you for indulging me. Uh, this was a little bit of a different exercise, but it's just nice so that, that sometimes you have to come up with different ways of reading scriptures. Uh, it's something that when you, <laughs> I was with a buddy of mine at the, at the um, minister's conference, and we had read this particular passage <clears throat> or pericope a thousand times. And the instructor brought out a, a, a point that we, had, we both looked at each other and had never heard or thought of. It was just powerful. So sometimes we have to find ways or creative ways to mm -hmm. look at God's word. Mm -hmm. So to look at God's word, let me take it. Excuse me. I told you I was going to shout me out of my chair. I didn't know <laughs> it was going to be this intriguing. So, but that, um, and as you can see, looking at these five senses and discipleship, and bridging and merging them together, it's like a whole new way of looking at what was happening in that story and how all, all your senses are being pricked and <laughs> looking at what God was doing through Paul and Silas. It's, it's just powerful. And to even look at something as mundane or as quick as when Jesus was turning water into wine, that here taste was going to play such a pivotal role in the confirmation of the very miracle that's going to be the first miracle that's recorded by Jesus. Just astounding to look at it from looking at the five senses. So I just want, want to thank you for your time. Thank you for coming out. We're closer approaching our hour. And uh, hopefully you, you retrieve or got something out of this exercise. Uh, so you have been a delight. And so I, we will be wrapping up. My lovely wife, do you have any comments or any final words? Well, I, I did enjoy this um, this study. I think that as servants, you know, of Christ and and trying to you know be disciples for the Lord, I think there's some things that we do um, naturally in terms of seeing somebody in need or or hearing something. Um, that someone is saying uh, where, you know, where we need to minister to or address or um, hearing the, you know, hearing the things that, you know, we're, uh, that are not so obvious. Um, but the study of the, the of touch uh, and, and smell, I just thought that that was very interesting to, to, to bring out in, ter in relation to discipleship. So I, I enjoyed the study. Thank you. Thank you. And so before I ask Reverend Bowens to uh, close us out, because he will be the next uh, assigned teacher, so I want you to hear his voice. Uh, Minister Davis, did you have any comments or anything else that uh, announcements or anything we need to know about or be aware of? I don't know of any upcoming announcements. We just pray that everyone would continue with Fuel for Courage and invite a friend. Um, they are posting the link on the church announcement, so hopefully that'll get others to join us. I think we're a well-knit family, and God always has more room at his table. Um, the one thought I thought, Reverend Winston, about this passage, and I love this exercise, um, expanding taste in a different direction. You know, we know the natural taste, but in terms of the spiritual taste, the disciple, uh, Paul and Silas were able to get just the taste of the suffering of Christ. Mm. Because he too was stripped, he too was yeah. beaten, he too was laid with stripes, and mm. you know they prepared his body and all. So it just seemed like there's a taste of that too. Mm -hmm. it like <laughs> that conference all over again. Just oh my goodness, the spiritual epiphanies were just mind blowing. Oh, okay, now, crazy, just, one, of, one of the things, one of the things that I um that I, I did forget to add, um, hearing God's voice for those who cannot hear, um. You don't mm. necessarily need to 
to have hearing to hear his voice. Mm. Or mm. sight to see him. Or yeah. sight to Both see have him. witnesses, right? And I'm <laughs> right. Where right. you're going. Yes. Can I and share yes. a story Spiritual real quick sight. in reference to hearing God? Yes. I had a young young man, little maybe five, six years old. We were, we were walking to his car. His mother was giving me a ride. And he said to me, Miss Gale, he said, um, does God have a voice? How come I can't hear him like I can hear you talking to me right now? Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, God, give me an answer for this little kid. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, when you hear the birds chirping outside your window mm -hmm. on a summer morning, I said, that's God's voice. Wow. When you know that your parents mm -hmm. and your, your grandparents and your cousin love you with all their heart and you love them, that's God's voice. Mm -hmm. I said, when you straighten up your room on a Saturday morning without being told, that's God's voice. Mm -hmm. And then I said to him, when you've had a rough day at school and you come home and your mother has made all your favorite foods, I said, that's God's voice. And he stopped walking and he looked up at me and he said, you're explaining God's voice to me right now. Is that God's voice? <laughs> and I was just so wow. touched. I said, yes, baby, that's God's voice. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> so I just thought it was, a, you know, just wanted to interject that because we yes. hear him in so many different ways. Yes. And Amen. to be able to relate to that child. And he got it. He, he got it in, in the explanation. So I just thought that was wonderful. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to stand now because I can't sit any longer. This is just, <laughs> my goodness. My good, my cup runneth over. So again, truly, thank you for all your, your comments, your feedback, and your participation. So Reverend Bowles, I tried to give you a heads up just so in case you had to collect your thoughts. I know you're so seasoned, but I could always call on you. But um, if you would be so kind enough to close us out in prayer. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for um, this series of lessons um, presented by the Winstons. And God, we love you. We love your word. We thank you for um, their labor of love. We pray now, dear Heavenly Father, that our lives would be different because of what we've learned over the past uh, several weeks. We pray that your word would find lodging in our heart, that the seed of the word of God would be germinated, would germinate in us and in our hearts, and it would bear fruit uh, for your glory and for our good. Thank you for everyone who um, has attended these lessons. Bless their lives, bless their homes, and bless their walk and their fellowship with you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Oh, world needs you are So oh.